Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Andrew Yang and a specific political task that I believe he owns, because no other uh, 2020 U.S. presidential primary candidates will own this task. I think uh, my vote is going to Andrew Yang because I think he's really more, far more intelligent than any other candidate out there. He's double Ivy League, like no other candidate on the platform right right now. He has two Ivy League, um, Ivy League degrees, right, um, from Ivy League schools. Really incredible. Uh, and the other issue is, I just you know, UBI is a platform that is really unprecedented. Nobody else, every. Everybody else is just tweaking the existing platform, and uh, and Andrew Yang is saying I'm going to implement an economic model in the United States of America that is truly revolutionary and will actually transform our our politics, our culture, and our society, and frankly, the rest of the world as well. There, if UBI works, there's no question there'll be half a dozen, two dozen, you know, nations that follow us down this road. So. Um, Andrew Yang has the, has the power to transform America and the world. Everybody else is just turning dials, right? Like on, on the existing platform, and um, and Andrew Yang is really talking about building a new flat platform. It's it's pretty incredible. All right, so what is this task that he has to own? Well, the reality is, it's uh, fixing the Donald Trump issue uh, as far as the public's perception of Donald Trump. And starting to own some very specific, very uncomfortable facts about Donald Trump and fix people's expectation and understanding of Donald Trump. And today we're going to talk about one facet of it, which is Donald Trump's ability to win by losing. Okay, so let me define the problem and then we're going to talk more specifically about this win by losing uh, segment. So uh, I'm really convinced that the, the Democrats have horribly mishandled Donald Trump, uh, terribly, and that there's a, a lot of work to be done to fix the horrendous uh, problems that they've created, okay? So basically, what they need to do is, so, and, and the reality is, the Democrats at the macro level have painted Donald Trump as a buffoon and a monster, and these things are just, they're not true. What he is, is I think he's... Um, I think what I think he is is he's incre- he's he is prideful, arrogant, and selfish. That's that those are his worst attributes, and that's really what what he is, right? But in addition to those things, he is a political genius. He is changing politics forever, and this has to be acknowledged by the Democrats, right? I think there really needs to be a moment where one of the Democrats says, "We got it a hundred percent wrong. We have told we." We, the Democrat Party, have told you, the American public, that Donald Trump is a buffoon and a monster. And none of these things, either one of these is true. He is a political genius and he is a savvy, capable opponent, right? And in addition to that, he is prideful, arrogant, and selfish. And we, as the American people, deserve better as a, as a president. That's the fact. Like, that, that is... That is an actual, true understanding of Donald Trump. It doesn't contain hyperbole. It doesn't contain insults that allow the Democrats uh, to, to, you know, kind of um, salve their uh, salve their wounds in this uh, comfortable balm of insulting Donald Trump. Right? That that has really got to go away because it's incredibly destructive. Right? People, for one, people like people don't see Donald Trump coming because. They've been told for so long that he's an idiot, and they actually think that that's true. It's not even remotely true. He, you know, he's, it's not, okay? So I really feel like Andrew Yang has to be the one to fix this, because uh, frankly, no other Democrat is going to do it. They're not. They're just, they just enjoy too much, like kind of just soaking in the marination of, of the enjoyment of of insulting him. And it, it's it's really bad idea, because it, it sets, ex, it, it, and it sets, it sets a platform that Trump is very, very good at using. He, he he has very much leveraged being underestimated, okay? All right, so let's talk about, so just one, so let's, so I'm going to give you some evidence, right, of his political genius. Tim Wu uh, is a very, uh, very knowledgeable writer. He writes for the New York Times, and uh, he did an op-ed for the New York Times where he really defined um, Donald Trump's ability to win when he is losing. This has been one of the most powerful tools, powerful strategies, uh, actually it's more of a tactic, um, that Donald Trump has used. Uh, I'll give you four exact instances of it. So 
Donald Trump has set the playing field, right? He has set up the board. Like if 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 chess is being played at the political level, he's he has really set up the pieces on both sides, right? And he's doing this thing called winning by losing. And it's really in many ways it's unprecedented. There's never been a candidate who has been able to do this so effectively, all right? So let's let's tick them off. One of the clearest examples of this is the census question, right? So he was, so him and, and his cronies, he was like, hey, let's put a question on the census that says, are you a U.S. citizen, right? And uh, immediately the Democrats were like, oh my gosh, you know, this is terrifying. We can't allow this to happen because it's going to scare people who aren't citizens. They're not going to answer the census. Then they're not going to be counted and then they're not going to be represented, right? And so the Democrats are like, oh my gosh, this is terrible, right? So they scramble to defeat Donald Trump and make sure that the question remains off the bat, off the census, right? And it, this is, it's incredible what Trump did, right? Well, this thing was discussed and discussed on the media, and there's been a whole bunch of back and forth, right? And the reality is it looks like the Democrats are going to beat Donald Trump, and the question is going to be kept off the census, right? Well, the reality is it doesn't matter. And the reason why is there's been so much squawk from the media that the people who are who are here who might not be documented, right, who might not be legal citizens, they're going to be so terrified from everything that they've heard just from the discussion of this question being on there that they're going that there's it's incredibly likely they won't they'll avoid the census anyway. They won't answer the door. They'll make sure that they know when they're, you know, uh, they'll they'll you know say they've already answered or oh I'm rushing out I can't I can't help you right now come back some other time blah 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 right and so the reality is the Democrats you know they're like yay we've beat it you know and I, I actually think that the question is still under it's still being determined if it's going to be on the on the census or not but even but even you know if it is not put onto the census this is a perfect example of winning by losing right so he loses um the the, the fight and the question does not go onto the census but there's been so much talk about it in the media that it it does the job effectively even though the question never went onto the ballot it's really really powerful here's another one um uh basically uh Donald Trump uses a lot of wrong information, information that he knows is wrong or that he doesn't care if it's right or not, right? And one of the, and man, there have been many, many, many reporters that have realized this, right? He'll say something wrong and then literally a thousand news outlets will say, Donald Trump said X, Y, Z. This fact is wrong, right? But what they didn't get for years, for years... Reporters, maybe like 10 or 20 percent of the reporters are just catching up now and going, oh, my gosh, we've been taking his wrong information that he wanted to propagate. And we've been saying it constantly. We're adding it's wrong. But the reality is it, we are we are trumpeting this information and us tacking a little button on the end that says it's wrong hardly matters. The information that he wanted to distribute is distributed. Right. It's it's masterful and it's winning by losing the wall right there's no wall the, the wall hasn't been created right donald trump has lost wrong right uh by not creating the wall the immigration issue he can he can say oh look you know we have just pete we have tens of thousands of people coming over the border every single year uh the situation's out of control the country's in crisis we're in danger he can say all these things and and the subtext is because I wasn't able to build my wall because Congress stopped me, right? And it's red meat for his base. He wins again, right? The government shutdown, right? There was a government shutdown just a few, I think it was like uh, near the beginning of the year. And, um, and basically, Nancy Pelosi defeated Donald Trump, defeated him, right? And and Donald Trump caved before Nancy Pelosi caved, right? So people were people were thinking that Donald Trump had lost. He didn't. He won, right? We just had a. The, we are just now. Uh, sign, uh, uh, Congress is signing a budget that Donald Trump put forward. It's a massive budget. Budget. It increases defense spending. It increases domestic spending, and it massively increases the deficit, right? 
But the reason why it's being signed with virtually no fight from the Democrats is they learned that uh, they learned that that Donald Trump, when he goes to work, like the government shutdown, that was much more painful for the for the Democrats than it was for the Republicans. Okay, now that's the fact. Uh, Donald Trump is so masterful that he routinely wins by losing. And in addition to that, sometimes he fr- straight up wins. Here's a perfect example of straight up winning. He's put in two Supreme Court uh, justices. Those are just straight up wins, right? So this guy is winning when he's winning, and he's winning when he's losing, right? So the idea that the Democrats continue to call him an idiot, to continue to call him a buffoon, really just says more about them than it does on, on him, right? So it's my strong opinion that Andrew Yang needs to do the following. He needs to be up front with Americans and say, listen... I I am I am breaking apart breaking away from the Democrat party on this one thing. I uh, you will never ever again hear me say that Donald Trump is anything less than a capable intelligent opponent because he is, right? And he's not a monster. He's prideful, arrogant and selfish. That's not hyperbole. That's the truth, right? That's the way it needs to be managed. And he, and he goes, and I want everyone to understand that when SNL makes fun of him and calls him a Cheeto and says he has orange, that he looks orange, we, we can no longer do this. We cannot enjoy insulting him. We have got to treat him as a capable, intelligent opponent and defeat him outright, right? So I really think that uh, Andrew Yang needs to come forward then. And, and then... Having understood everything that I just said about his winning for losing, he has got to decide, do I accept this tactic, do I reject this tactic, or do I modify this tactic, right? So he has to say, okay, listen, is Donald Trump right? Like, is this the way that politics work now? And that I really should begin structuring my own own candidacy and then my governing uh, presidency as a win as a win when I'm losing structure because it is so powerful and that this is a tool. It's just like a wrench. He used it, I can use it. He Andrew Yang can choose to do that. Or he can say, I reject this, right? I'm not going to use this method. Now he should not reject it because Donald Trump used it. That is foolishness. He should reject it specifically because he thinks it's morally wrong, which it very well may be. I'm not sure of that or not. I haven't fully uh, done my analysis to determine that. Or he's saying, that is not how I personally want to go forward, right? Or he could say, I'm going to use some aspects of how Donald Trump used this, but not all aspects of how Donald Trump used this. And so there needs to be this very careful, very specific um, approach where he is saying, Listen, this is this is how I'm going to do this, right? I am going to uh, I'm going to think about Donald Trump's ability to win when he's losing, and then I'm going to purposely choose to accept, reject, or modify it. That is the correct path for Don for Andrew Yang to use with Donald Trump and this amazing ability that he has that has to be understood and then needs to be decided on, right? He has this tool. It's in his hand. We see it now, right? And Andrew Yang has to just make a decision. Does he get the same tool and use it? Does he reject that tool or does he modify that tool? But it needs to be a conscious choice. And right now in the Democrats, there's just a lot of emotional maneuvering uh, and it's really incredibly ineffective. And, and it's, it's, making the, it's making the Democrats lose routinely, right? And so I really think this is, this is a better approach to understanding and dealing with Donald Trump. All of that is my opinion. I would love to hear your opinion. Let me know uh, in the comments below, please. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.